Okay, where's where's Christine? Oh, there she is. Okay. Uh, Christine Robertson Roxbury <clears throat> received her degree in occupational therapy from Temple University in Philadelphia. Christine is the primary occupational therapist at the Dan Aaron Parkinson Rehabilitation Center in Philadelphia. She is also a, a, a LSVT, big certified clinician, and is also a graduate of uh, and is a graduate of the NPF Allied Team Training Program for Parkinson's disease. In addition, she's, she's certified in manual lymph drainage, complete de decongestive therapy <clears throat> through the Norton School of Lymphatic Therapy. And Christine's also a member of our Medical Professional Advisory Committee. Okay, Christine. Good afternoon, everyone. Oops. Seem to be moving around. Are you? I think that's good. Is, it, is you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. okay. So just going back to what Heather was saying about being honest about what's going on with the changes at home and your independence levels changing. That is a very delicate thing for people to deal with. And as therapists, we all really respect that and know that that is a tough thing for all of you. And um, I guess one of the things that I say most to people are let's not wait to make these changes, whether it be in your routine at home with how you're getting dressed or washed or getting in and out of the shower. Um, let's not wait until you have a serious fall or an accident and say, okay, well now I think it's time for a shower chair or a tub chair. Let's do these things before there's a major problem because as Heather was saying, a serious fracture, like a hip fracture, can really cause a big mobility setback and some people don't quite recover the way they want to. So with that being said, I'm going to start at the beginning of the day, just like I would if I were seeing you for an evaluation, I always say, the occupational therapist, which a lot of people don't know what occupational therapy is, they think they're coming to see me for a job, which I'm not here to find a job for you. <laughs> my role as the occupational therapist is, my concern is everything pretty much from the time you wake up in the morning till the time you go to bed. So the occupation of who you are, all those things that you do throughout the day, all the little things, the big things, the activities of daily living, your leisure, everything. So most of us start our day out in the bathroom. <laughs> um, so how many people in the audience are having difficulty getting in and out of the tub or shower? Okay, thank you for your honesty. Okay. <laughs> um, anybody using a tub chair at this point or a shower chair? Okay, good. Very wise decision. Um, there's a lot of options out there, okay, depending on what you have. If you have a regular shower stall, it's simple. You know, we can find you something that can be small, fits right in there. I always recommend something that has a back, okay, because something with a back always promotes good posture, which is a problem for most people with uh, this diagnosis. Also, for the tub, there's two choice is right there. The first one at the top is called a transfer bench. It's a little bit bigger. Um, it sits a little bit outside of the tub, but it does really help for people who have more si significant movement problems because it gives you a little bit more lead way with how you have to line yourself up. Um, the second one there towards the bottom is another very, very popular one. It uh, I believe that one's made by a Rubbermaid company. So what, you, what we do is we have people sit on the chair, you kind of back up to it, scoot your buttocks back on there, and swivel your legs into the tub. That way we kind of remove the person's need to have to step over the tub wall, because that's a common time for people to have an accident, a slip or any kind of loss of balance. So three big reasons to have a tub chair or a shower chair. Eliminating loss of balance, okay? Promoting good posture, and also conserving energy. 
because we don't want to have you waste very valuable energy standing in the shower in the tub, okay? You have better things to do throughout the day. This is just something we have to do. I'd rather you have energy to go and do something fun with a family member or a friend or to do some of that great exercise that Heather was talking about. <laughs> um, so there's a few things there. There's an unfortunate thing about these items is insurance doesn't cover them. I still don't understand why. I think that's a major problem for a lot of people. Um, but the website that is listed below there, the 1-800-wheelchair.com, is some, a place that we really often recommend to people because it's very, very reasonable. And they deliver right to the home, sometimes free shipping, sometimes under $10. So, or you can actually go to like a local medical supply or pharmacy. Okay. Other things that we recommend, grab bars. Grab bars are very simple modification. However, keeping in mind, reaction time is a problem for people. You know, your ability to right yourself when you go to lose your balance. So oftentimes I will recommend a grab bar and a shower chair because sometimes even if you do start to lose your balance, your ability to grab onto that grab bar, you're just not quick enough to do it now. So it is something that's important now, especially if you have a shower stall, because you'll be stepping in and out. Um, there's a lot of different options out there. Some people are a little bit reluctant because maybe they just had their bathroom remodeled and they love the way it looks. <laughs> it's very pretty. Um, and they're kind of not real thrilled about something looking very hospital or, or medical-like. And I understand that. But these medical supply companies got very smart a company by the name of Moen, they make very beautiful grab bars. And in all different patterns and colors, they're very, very attractive. Most of the time, you wouldn't even know that they were a grab bar. Um, another thing that I like to recommend is um, a handheld shower head. Very simple modification. One reason is it decreases the amount of turning in the shower. People with these diagnoses have difficulty with their mobility. Making turns is a common, common area where people fall. They do something that's called the pivot. So that being said, if that's on dry land, I definitely don't want people turning in the shower where it's wet, soapy, there's soap scum. No matter how clean you are, there's always something. So if we have that, we can just pull it down, wash all the soap and water off your head and your back, and not have to do any turning at all. Also, if you have the shower chair, even better, because then if you're washing your hair, you can sit down and use the shower head and not worry about soap getting into your eyes, closing your eyes, becoming disoriented, things like that. Another thing to think about, another reason, just going back to the tub chair, if you weren't sold already, um, <laughs> is if there's a blood pressure issue. A lot of our patients will say, Christine, I feel really dizzy in the shower, or getting up, you know, I just feel lightheaded. I dropped my soap and I leaned over and I fell. So that's another really good reason to have something to sit on in the shower. Okay. How many people are having difficulty getting up from the toilet? Anybody? Okay. That's another common thing. Most standard toilets are very low. We don't recognize that until there's a problem. So a quick fix for this is getting a three-in-one commode. And this is something that you can get a prescription for from your doctor and is covered by insurance, which is lovely, okay? So it's called a three-in-one commode because it can be used at the bedside for one reason. I, loved, I love this because people who make frequent trips to the bathroom in the middle of the night often have a lot of problems with their balance. And also we have to be careful with you know, making sure things are clutter-free, there's enough light, things like that. So anytime we can decrease multiple trips throughout the night, back and forth in the bathroom, we want to do that, okay? Sometimes people are a little bit reluctant to that because they feel like they're giving in. And I understand that. But if I'm seeing that your balance is poor and it's daytime and it's broad daylight and we have proper lighting, all the environmental things are just perfect, and you're having trouble getting in and out of bed, and then you tell me that you have bladder urgency and frequency, I really don't feel comfortable with you walking back and forth. I think it's better that we have something right at the bedside. Even for some of the male patients, I'll say, how about we try a urinal? 
It's very simple. Keep it right at the bedside. You can use your bed rail that Heather recommended. And we can make this a much easier process. Uh, another thing you can do is use the three-in-one commode um, to help increase the height of your toilet, your existing toilet. So what you do is you just remove that bucket there. Okay, which I'll get my little pointer. This portion right here, you can take that out. Put the, the frame of the commode right over top of your exist, existing toilet. Pull everything up, all your toilet seats, and then instantly you have increased height and arms to push up from. And usually that's all people need. Okay, and that can make for a very easy and safe sit to stand, which is a problem that Heather went over. Very, very common for people. Another place you can use this is in the shower. Never in the tub, I would say in the shower. Um, because, you know, you don't want to, it's just the tub is not a good idea for, for this product. But, I mean, it's, it's an okay scenario, but it's not the best. In the shower, I would prefer a shower chair. But if you, maybe for economical reasons, couldn't afford to buy both things, this would be the way to go for the, just the shower chair. Okay, touching on grooming a little bit. Uh, a lot of people tell me that they're having trouble with oral hygiene because of a tremor or rigidity, um, wrist problems. They're just not able to clean their teeth the way they used to. They're going to the dentist frequently and they're very upset about this. So a few things that you can try are water picks. Okay, that can help to loosen a lot of areas that have the food that it gets a little bit trapped in the back um, where you can't maybe floss like you used to, okay? Another thing that you can try if you were a flosser prior to all these fine motor coordination problems is the pre-threaded floss picks, which you can purchase anywhere. You can get those at dollar stores, you can get them at the grocery store, pharmacies. Um, this product here, Glide, if your teeth tend to be very tight Together, this is a very, very easy product to use. Other things like tube squeezers, you can find those in therapy catalogs like salmon, salmonspreston.com. That's really helpful for people who have use of more just one-handed. Another thing that you may have seen on television is the touch and brush. And that's a hands-free device that it kind of uses a vacuum force. You just put your toothbrush right underneath and it spits your toothpaste right out onto your toothbrush, which is very, very convenient for people. You can get those online and you can even get them in Dr. Leonard's catalogs if you're not familiar with uh, going online. Okay, switching to electric versus manual. A lot of times people, this is a, even a difficult thing for people. They prefer their old way of doing things. And again, like I said, I totally understand and respect it. However, if you are having problems with these things. We need to find ways of changing that. We need to make it better for you. And we want to decrease your visits to the dentist, of course. So um, using just a ma um, an electric toothbrush, and it doesn't have to be an expensive one. It can be something like the Crest Spin Brush, which is probably under $10. Um, you can get something like that. You can use an electric razor. Some gentlemen are not very fond of the electric razor, but I've been told by a few patients if you hang in there for more than two to three weeks, you're, it will adjust to your face <laughs> and it, you will learn to love it. Um, now they also have those, uh, this, the um, soap dispensers that are automatic and you can just stick your hands under and it, it'll spit the soap right out at you instead of using um, bars of soap, which can be very difficult for people who have fine motor co coordination problems and they drop things quite often. We want to make sure that that's not happening and we don't want you to have to bend over a lot because when you bend over, that puts you in a position where you can le lose your balance, especially if you're not using good body mechanics. Okay, some other ADL devices that we recommend. This one right here, this is a reacher or a grabber. How many people have one of these? I think every household should have one of these. I love these. <laughs> um, this can be very helpful for picking things up that fall on the floor because again, we never want you bending over. Um, for reaching for things that are high, of course, we don't want them to be something that's heavy, maybe just a pound or so. And also getting dressed. If you're sitting in a chair or at the edge of the bed, 
you can use that to grab the waistline of your pants or your underpants and to help wiggle that up your leg just to give you the head start that you need, just to decrease you having to bend over. And of course, I never want you standing on one leg when you're, when you're putting your underwear or your pants on. You are not a flamingo. That's what I always say, <laughs> okay? So especially if you know in your heart of hearts that you're having a balance problem, you never want to stand on one leg when you're getting dressed. The uh, item right next to that is a button hook, and the item below, they're button fasteners. So there's things that we can try in the clinic if you don't want to purchase them yourselves, you can always go to an OT clinic or PT clinic, um, and odds are they have these devices. You can try them before you purchase them, but um, they can be very handy. The item right next to the button hook, they're elastic shoelaces, and that's a really neat thing to have, too, if sh tying your shoes is a problem. So what they do is we stick them in your sneakers or your shoes, tie them up to where they kind of feel comfortable, and then when you go to put your shoes off and on, just pull the tongue of the shoe out and use a shoehorn, which you can see there's many, <laughs> um, and that just allows you to slide your foot in and out very easily. They even have elastic shoelaces at sporting goods stores and places like that. Um, and then finally, this picture over here, this gentleman, this is a gentleman using what's called a sock aid, and that can be helpful for some people, not everybody. I would say before you purchase something like that, maybe go to a clinic and let, you know, ask them to let you try it out, because if you have a lot of fine motor coordination problems, it may cause a little bit more stress. And one of the things we like to encourage is decreasing stress as much as possible because stress can only make your symptoms escalate more. So we want to make life as simple as possible. And if the device is not doing that, then it's not the right device for you. Okay. Telephone options. Anyone having difficulty with using the telephone these days at home? Okay, good. If that does occur, um, you can switch to a large button phone. Things like this can be purchased at Radio Shacks online. I'm a big advocate of Amazon.com. Um, cell phones these days, they do everything. And they have the voice dialer systems where you can just say, call mom, call my therapist, whoever. If you have it programmed in your phone, they'll actually call the person. It'll just recognize what, whatever you want. And that's a really important thing, especially if you're home alone ever. We want to make sure you're able to communicate if there's a problem and if you need to get in touch with someone. Okay, moving on to eating. Any problems with that? Any problems? In the audience? Okay. All right. This is another common thing that I see in our clinic. Difficulty because of visual eye gaze issues. Okay. So seeing people, sometimes people are missing what's on their plate, which I never want to happen because I enjoy eating and I never want you to miss out on anything good. And also guiding utensils from the plate to the mouth. So things, common things that I recommend. A number one, like Heather said, postures key. It's huge. So we have to make sure that the person is in a really good position. A lot of times I hear, well, I eat in my lazy boy. <laughs> Not the best position for eating, that's for sure. Not the best position for a lot of things, but Definitely not eating. So we want you to be in a firm chair, something that gives you good support, preferably something with arms. I always like something with arms. So if you have a kitchen chair or a dining room chair with arms, that's a good setup. Always sitting at a table, not the table trays. Always at a table. And as close as possible. And I know scooting close to a table is a very difficult thing for a lot of people. So that's something you can definitely work on with physical therapy or occupational therapy. Um, if it's still a problem, having whoever's with you move the table to you or having them scoot you in a little. Um, even purchasing those little sliding things that you can put underneath furniture and you can get them so reasonable, sometimes like $2. Stick them under your chair and it just helps your, your chair to glide much more simple. Stay away from chairs with wheels. A lot of times people will say to me, don't worry, Christine, my chair has wheels. <laughs> That just tells me we have no control. We have no braking system, God forbid, if you went to sit down and you pushed down and that chair went from right from underneath you. So stay away from that. So posture, close to the table. If you are someone who tends to f flex forward, which is something I see a lot of, 
trying a lumbar roll support, something that you would use at maybe a desk chair, or even rolling up um, some towels into like a little log, putting it in your low back. If we can correct your posture down below in the lumbar area, a lot of times we can bring you upright to a really good posture, which is very good for eating. Um, also, bringing the food closer to the patient, for instance, building up the surface of the table. So this can be done with a box, a book or two, maybe even a, a little tray table, something that is going to decrease the distance that they have to go from their food to their mouth. So bringing up a little higher can actually improve a lot of success for a person, especially if you're in the comfort of your own home. Um, and decrease a lot of frustration, which we want because we don't want anyone to miss out on a meal or become too fatigued or frustrated that they begin to lose weight. It can also help to improve the visualization of where the food is. Um, another very important thing, cueing the person to move their head up and down. If the eyes become fixed and they're not able to see things, especially their food, we need to remind them to tilt their head and move their head around to compensate for lack of eye movement because they could be missing something very good on the lower edge of that plate and we don't want them to do that. Um, another easy way around that is just rotating the plate for them. Or if they're able to rotate their plate themselves, that way they know that they're definitely not missing anything. Um, and then finally, another thing <laughs> that I recommend is elbows on the table. I know it's Contrary to everything you've ever been taught in your entire life, <laughs> no, no elbows on the table. But when you come into my clinic, I say, you have special dispensation to put your elbows on the table for a few reasons. One, like I said, a lot of my patients have posture that's very forward flexed. If I bring them close, and if I elevate the height of their plate or their bowl, and I have their elbows supported, their elbows are gonna cue them to stay upright, right? It's almost like a kickstand to a bicycle hold you up, okay? Also, using the elbow as a lever, because that's what it is, right? If they have a tremor issue, if we have their arm in free space, it's kind of giving it a license to do whatever it wants to do. If we have it supported on a table surface and using it as a lever, putting a little bit of weight through it, we can control it a little bit more. Maybe that tremor won't go away. Maybe some of that coordination, in coordination will still be there but I think we can control it a little bit better and it's worth trying, okay? When you're going out to eat, some people tell me that they often, they just avoid this altogether because eating out can be stressful for people. And it makes me sad because if that's something that was a big part of your life at one point, I never want you to miss out on anything that you enjoy. So, that being said, a few things you can do is request that your food come to you pre-cut. No one thinks of that, but you're the customer, and you're always right, right? So you just order your food pre-cut. The chef will do it, the cook, whoever. And if, if that's all it takes to make you enjoy your meal and decrease the stress level, then let's just do it, okay? Other things, if you don't want to go that route, you can just order finger foods shrimp cocktail, chicken fingers, sandwiches, whatever is easier for you. Look at that menu and think, what's successful for me? Sometimes salads, people go for the salad, and the salad is actually very hard. It's hard for me to stab sometimes. <laughs> so keep in mind what you have an easy time with, because the less stress, the more you're going to relax, and the, more, the better time you're going to have, OK? Um, if you're a soup person, hmm, soup is very difficult. But like I said, you can, with the elbows on the table, supported, you can ask them to, to put it in a mug or a to-go cup and just have those elbows rested and bringing it to your mouth and drinking it, okay? Um, as long as it's not a very thick, chunky soup <laughs> and there are no swallowing issues. That's another very important thing. Um, and also like buffets and things like that, and even going to weddings, we have people 
they say they're very stressed about things. Like if, there, if there's a buffet, like I highly recommend if you can have a family member go and retrieve the food for you because trying to focus on too many things at once is a challenge. Like Heather mentioned, multitasking can be very hard. And some of the things that we talk about in the clinic, people say that's not multitasking, but it really is. When you have to focus on what your feet are doing, your posture, how you're walking, are you taking big steps, and now you're holding a plate and trying to maneuver around others. That can be a really tough thing. So if you can have a family member or a friend do that for you, just let them know what you need, okay? Always ask for help. And some other devices, just to mention, if there's a problem. Um, this one here, this is Dyson. Kind of looks like a big fruit roll up. Okay, and that is helpful for people who tell me their plates tend to slide around, okay? When they're eating, their plates shift, so you can purchase something like that. Or even the things that you line your counters, um, your cabinets with, rather, the little bit rubberized kind of, you can get those very, very cheap at um, dollar stores and local targets and places like that. This here, this is an Asian soup spoon, and it's something I love to recommend because it has a very deep bowl to it. A lot of adapted utensils, you see them, they have very, very thick grip, which is nice if that's your problem. But a lot of times the grip, may, maybe that's not the issue. It's more just coordination. So we need something that's going to support more food. So something like that you can purchase online or even just look in the house and see what your deepest spoon is. And that's what you should try. Okay. Okay. Um, other things like this, the non-spillable cups and mugs, thermoses, weighted utensils work for some people, not for everybody, small percentage of people, um, rocker knives, which take out um, the need to kind of use a serrated edge. This is more of a push and a rock, okay? And then over in the corner here, these are plate guards, and what they do is kind of sit on your plate like a headband would, <laughs> and it protects your food from rolling off the plate. If there's a person that tends to chase their food when they're trying to get it onto their fork or their spoon, it kind of helps with that. Reading, I'm going to kind of quickly go through some things as I'm running out of time. Um, just some leisure things. If you're someone who enjoyed reading before and your vision is a problem, that's very frustrating. So again, moving your head up and down to compensate for those lack of eye movements. Using book holders, there's several out there. You can purchase them at the places that I have listed there. They could be mounted high above or sit on a desk. Uh, using audiobooks, that's another really great way to compensate for not being able to read anymore. So let the, let the book be read to you. That way you never lose the enjoyment of um, hearing a story. Also prism glasses, that can be something that can help with blurry vision, um, other visual disturbances. E-readers such as the Kindle, they have text-to-speech features. Um, the iPad, which is another very exciting thing that is out there. Same thing, they have something called a voiceover feature, which will read a, books to you. You can surf the web. You can do so many things. Computer accessibility, if you're having problems with that, all you have to do, if you're a Windows person, you can just go to the control panel on your computer and look for the accessibility options or the ease of access center. And there's many, many options there to change fonts, um, keyboard shortcuts such as filter keys that will ignore repeated keystrokes. If you're someone who has a tremor, there's a narrator that will read things to you on your screen. Voice recognition, if you're having trouble with typing, that's something to consider. Some computers are preloaded with that. Also, if it's an older operating system, um, considering drag and dictate software. Computer mouse options, that's another, like I said, common problem for people. This is an interesting um, trackball uh, mouse that uh, was brought to my attention and it requires no arm movement. It's only thumb and index finger if you're somebody who's out in the workforce still and having problems. And if you're someone who is a digital camera person who enjoys taking pictures and that's one of your fun leisure things, um, considering something that has an image stabilization technology included, that can be really helpful. 
and then some resources for um, some great places to visit. Okay, so this top one here is the Cure PSP's How to Do series, and that's something Heather and I were a part of. So any of the things that we talked about today, you can actually go onto YouTube and find videos on how to do all these things, all the things that we've practiced with patients, you can find it, okay? Um, the National Resource Center for Rehab, that is a very interesting site there and a number that you can actually get in contact with a therapist. If you have a question, they'll call you back or email you and answer any question that you have. The LSVT Big, that's something that Heather and I are both certified in and that if you're interested in specific exercises, such as this program, you can go to this website and put in your zip code and they will find you a clinician who is certified. Certified aging and place specialist, those people help you adapt your home so that you can stay in your home and be happy and independent as much as possible for as long as possible. And then these websites here are just some other places you can go for some informational handouts. Um, John Argue has a great site on exercise and activity videos. Uh, the dance, as Heather mentioned before, and the 1-800 wheelchair, which is one of our favorite um, equipment websites, and then another website there for exercise resources, and some more. <laughs> but these are pretty straightforward, so I'm going to let you guys just look at those. Um, but just remember, um, it's really important to make these modifications now, okay? So our goal as therapists is to keep you happy and healthy and independent as much as possible for as long as possible. So the sooner you make these changes, the better off you'll be and the happier you'll be, the safer you'll be, you and your family, okay? So if there's any specific questions, we'll be here. And thank you so much for your attention. I'm going to ask uh, Larry and, and Heather to come up on the stage. We'll take your questions for probably another maybe 15 minutes or so because I know some of you 